Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be. In the previous two Visual Basic training videos that were uploaded, in the first one we looked at some very basic code, and in the second one we saw how we could assign a macro to a button. On this spreadsheet I have some very simple data with a simple bar chart and I've already put some buttons down here on the on the spreadsheet uh, by using the uh, insert command in the Visual Basic uh, window and I simply clicked on the button control and then drew some buttons and copied them down and then edited the text by right clicking on a uh, button and editing the text. In other words what I did was to prepare the spreadsheet before I worry about the Visual Basic. Just a little bit of pre-planning to save some time. What we're going to do is to see how these numbers here are affected by the macros which will appear in these buttons, which will be assigned to these buttons, and then to see what effect they have immediately on the chart. So if, for example, I was a sales manager, uh, I might do something like this to um, present to the staff uh, in, in a presentation, uh, which uh, enables me to very quickly look at the effect of, of sales. So what we're going to do is to click on Visual Basic, to go to the Visual Basic window and we're going to insert a module and to start creating the macro I'll type sub and then we're going to say hire Jan sales in other words the uh, macro will be called hire Jan sales and when I press enter Excel automatically puts in, or Visual Basic automatically puts in the end sub so that I can type the routine in between. And the routine works like this. Back in the spreadsheet, I see that the sales for January are in cell B6. So what I want to do is to use some code here, which is called range, that's the code word, which says look in B6 so I need to type B6 thus and then a full stop and then look at the value in B6 then I type an equal sign because I want to increase the value in B6 by 1000 each time I click on the on the button containing the macro so that will be range again B6 close the bracket, close the double quote, dot and look at the value and add 1000 to that value. Now let's see if it works. So what we're going to do is to go back to our spreadsheet and we're going to right click on this particular button and we're going to assign a macro to it and that macro will be higher January sales higher Jan sales and click OK now we'll click away to deselect and watch the figure in B6 and also watch the graph series here so when I click increase it goes up by 1000 and so did the so did the chart that increased by 1000 there now what I'm going to do is go back to Visual Basic and I can now copy and paste that particular procedure two more times for February and March. So we'll click paste and we'll do the February sales. So this, this macro will be called higher February sales. Don't need to retype the whole lot, just higher Feb sales. And the difference, of course, is that the range is now B7 because the February sales are in B7. So B7 and the range here again, B7. And we're going to increase the February sales, we'll say, by 1500 each time. We believe that uh, February will be a good sales month. So that's the end of that one one to go 
for the increase and this is for March so we'll paste and the range for March remembering that the uh, March uh, sales need to be labelled as such for the macro March sales and the range will be B8 because that is the cell that Visual Basic needs to look in and find the value B8 and we're going to increase that value we'll say uh, we know March has got a lot of public holidays for example so we'll only increase that by 800 each time so so far so good now what we can do is go back to our spreadsheet and assign the macros to the buttons so the Feb sales will be higher Feb sales okay March will be higher March sales so we're simply assigning the macros as we need to. Now back to Visual Basic because I now see that I might like to click buttons to see what happens to the chart for decreasing sales. So what we'll do, we'll go back to Visual Basic and we will paste. But this will be a sub of lower January sales. The range is B6 of course, but this time the value will be minus 1000. So the logic is quite simple. Now we can paste again for February. So this will be lower Feb sales. You'll notice that there are no spaces in macro names. The range is B7. B7 and the value this time will be lower it will be minus 1500 so there we go and one to go this will be lower March sales So you can see that what I'm what I'm doing here is simply giving the macros a name lower March sales without spaces the range will be B8 for the lower for the March uh, uh, values B8 and the value will be minus We'll say 800. Those figures, of course, could be anything you need. Now back to the spreadsheet, and we do that simple assign the macro, decrease the January sales by assigning a macro, lower January sales, OK. Assign the macro, lower February sales, and assign the macro again, lower March sales. So let's see how they work. We have the salespeople gathered around, and I might say to um, one of the salespeople, uh, Bill, uh, you are liable for higher February sales. And let's see how that will affect your chart if you can increase by 1500 uh, uh, in, in March. So the sales have increased by 1500. What if he has a really good month? Now they're up to 41,000 and you'll notice that the series increases in the chart because the chart of course is linked to these numbers when I created the chart. Uh, now the March sales we're going to say decrease by 800 so each time I click you'll notice that they're decreasing here and in the chart. So there is an example of how we can assign a value to a cell in Visual Basic by using the range command followed by the uh, cell reference in between brackets in double quotes followed by a dot and value that says to uh, Visual Basic look in that range at that cell B7 and get the value and then with that value add 1500 to it so uh, that's how it works it's not difficult uh, a lot of practice 
uh, you'll make mistakes but uh, make sure that you find out where your, mis your mistake was for example you may type an equal sign instead of uh, a plus sign or you might type a, uh, an asterisk instead of a minus sign or you might forget the full stop after uh, or before the word value so all of these things can be mastered and uh, there is an example of using six macros to change the way that sales and uh, charts appear uh, at the click of a button. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.